can see us. Welcome to our Tuesday morning uh, jewelry making tutorial. I'm Tracy with TiaraCast. And it looks like we're live. And um, thanks for joining us. Julie is here as well. She's, you can't see her, but she's, uh, she's hanging out in the comments and she'll be there to answer any questions and um, we'll be able to hear her. She'll pop on or she'll pop in with comments or um, questions that you guys have so I can, I can answer them. And um, today we are demonstrating how to make this Luna moth necklace. And um, this was, of course, one of the designs that we created for the marketing for our um, renewal collection, which launched last month, featuring this kind of amazing little Luna moth pendant that um, is proving very popular. People are loving this thing. We're getting a lot of questions, um, a lot of people asking if we're going to make a smaller one. So. I don't know. I think that's on our product development manager's rate. Uh, we think that's on her radar. And so, um, so yes, hope so. So what's kind of cool about this is the way I designed it. It's, it's made with some silk ribbon, 10 millimeter wide hand dyed silk ribbon, which is pretty easy to find out there in jewelry making land. And the way I created it is by doubling that silk ribbon back at the links here right here and um, running them through one of our barrel beads and then just tying a very simple overhand sliding knot so that you can slide that knot um, you know according to how long you would like to wear this necklace you can slide that knot i got it tangled hold on here you can slide that knot up and down to make it longer or shorter so i'm going to demonstrate that for you guys today um it's also i'm hoping julie will stick this link in here this is a project that's on our website it's called our luna moth necklace and um after our demonstration here today all the part list the part list and instructions of course are on the inspiration page and i'll, I'll also be upload uploading the um downloadable pdf version i'll do that um, after we're done with our demonstration today so let me think if there's anything else I wanted to mention before we get started. Um, I guess just happy Tuesday, it's nearly spring. Um, daylight savings time starts next week, next weekend, which affects some of us, not everybody. Um, so um, looking forward to that, I guess. It's always a kerfluffle to get used to that time change thing. But um, yeah, I mean, spring is coming. So we're looking forward to that. And let me think. Um, I, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to mention. I hope that everybody who's on and wanting to watch has had time to pop on. And I'm going to change my camera and um, show you guys the um, supplies I have set up for the demonstration. All right, so um, in the original design, the um, I used some peridot. Let me just bring that right back over so you guys can see. Um, I used some lovely peridot and tiger's eye and um, and amethyst beads, but I pretty much used them all up in this one. So I've changed our palette, and um, and I had had this fabulous green ribbon, but um, of course only had one of those. So I'm, I've changed up our palette and I'm going to use this pretty blue and I've got some crazy lace agate instead of our amethyst and our peridot. And I have these tiny little things. I think they're citrine, not 100% sure. I'm not, I'm not fabulous with gemstone identification. But, um, and then this, the little piece we're gonna, in the uh, original one, we had this pretty yellow gemstone. And um, in this one, we're going to use as the dangle below the Luna Moth. And in this version, we're going to use this is Blue Appetite, which is just delicious. I love it. So, but I, a funny, sort of a funny story. I don't know. It might be a horrifying story. When I was setting up all my supplies to start our video yesterday, I pulled out my trusty beading board, which has been in the shop for, I don't know, a million years. And... 
looked at it and started to set my beads up on it and went, this thing is disgustingly dirty. And I'm just curious out there, has anyone really looked at the condition of their beading board lately? It was, I was like, I cannot put that on a Facebook Live. So I got out a bunch of packing tape and just cleaned it off as best I could. So it might be time for a new beading board, but I don't think it looks too bad. So what I've got here is my little crazy lace agate four millimeter round beads. I have these little three millimeter, I think they're citrine bicones. I have our Turkish Spacer, which is one of my favorites. It's just got such a lovely little detail. And we actually have this in two sizes. It's, it comes in the smaller one and a larger one. And then I have some of our Dulce Vita. I forget if these are Jardine or Flora. Julie might be able to remind me, or I could cheat and look at my, it's the Flora ring. It's the small Flora ring. Got that. I've got our six by two millimeter distressed barrel bead. And I've got us a couple of crimp beads and jumper rings. And of course, the, the um, focal piece, the Luna Moth pendant link, which we used last week in our Luna Moth earrings. So it's fun to show it in a different use for this demonstration. So let's see. And of course, I've got my um, 10 millimeter silk ribbon. Now this I was saying is pretty widely available out there in um, jewelry making supply sources. Um, I think the first person who really started doing this um, type of silk ribbon that's hand dyed was Ute Bernson. Um, she's um, pretty well known for bringing this to the bead shows and being the I don't know if she was the original person who was doing this, but she's she's the name in the industry for this type of ribbon. Um, but it's it's very widely available. A lot of people um, are making this kind of ribbon now, and a lot of pretty variations too. So um, shouldn't be too hard for you guys to find out there. Um, let's see. I also have a this is about a 12 inch piece of um, beading wire. I want this is fine, so that means point or 0 0.14 or 0 0.15 inches, or no, am I doing that right? 0 0.014 or 0 0.015 inches. It's the finest, um, you know, it's sometimes in some brands it's called fine, some brands it just has the uh, the measurement number there on the, um, on the spool. And you want the fine because, you know, the gemstone beads can sometimes have very, very um, small holes. But if you were going to change up this design and maybe use some check glass beads, then you, you'll have larger holes. You could you could up the weight of your beading wire if you wanted to do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, our focal um, section of strung beads is only about um, eight inches long, but I've got about a 12 inch piece of wire because of course I want to give myself plenty of room for the crimping process. So I'm just going to start stringing on my, my components, which I got all set up for us. Hopefully there's no mistakes in there. I know that I'm not the only one who has strung a big long section of beads and then discovered that you got it out of pattern. But um, I think I did a pretty good job yesterday. I think I was paying attention. We'll see. So I'm just going to send you a new board, Tracy. What's that? Beetalon's going to send you a new clean board. Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I was really and truly horrified. Um, hold on, guys. I got to get my other pair of glasses and do the stacking glasses thing. Kimberly says the lint roller is her best friend. <laughs> Kimberly Crawford. Yes, lint roller's great, except you can't fit it down in all the little pockets of these things. So I was just going at it with the packing tape and tucking it on into all the corners to try and get it uh you know looking presentable because it, it was pretty good it came out pretty good um i got you know the bulk of the lint and the dust and the debris off um but then i wasn't quite sure what to do with all the coffee splatters <laughs> so <laughs> i just had to dab at it with some um some damp paper towels And also something different today, you guys, is we, um, I decided to start using my camera, uh, my tele, my, excuse me, my cell phone for the second camera. And um, I think that 
focus is much better. So you guys will have to pipe in and let me know what you think. I just abandoned the, the webcam and went to my phone. So hopefully it's looking better. And I could have done this in advance, you know, done the stringing, but it would have been a super quick video. I didn't want to let you guys go that fast. Gretchen uh, Schuller says the Hi, coffee Gretchen. splatters are a <laughs> the coffee splatters are a badge of honor <laughs> or something. A badge of hard work. I don't know. <laughs> That's great, though, that I can look forward to a fresh, clean one. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I need to remember to string my bail on. So, so what I did now that I'm looking at this and remembering how I planned it out yesterday is my pan my pattern has been a citrine spacer, citrine, crazy lace agate spacer. Etc. So in the center, I just strung three of those little citrine beads in a row so that my bale could sit right over the top of them because it kind of has it has an opening wide enough where um, it should sit right over the top of those citrine beads. So I guess that was good planning. I didn't want the bale to just be sitting on the wire because you know the bale has a larger hole and it can flop around a little bit and I didn't want it for that wire to be showing. Um, so I think that was good planning to do it this way because it also reminds me while I'm stringing, stringing along, it reminds me where I need to string on the bale so I don't forget. So there, I got my three little citrines and I can just pop the bale on right over that. And hopefully, yes, it slides right over them. So it will kind of sit in between the two crazy lace agate beads. This is a, I'm holding my breath, watching you oh. pick up those beads. <laughs> <laughs> they are tiny The nail beads. biter. <laughs> Speaking of, um, of beetle on, I should have my little speedy needle. I love that thing. How come I didn't bring that out for this job? Too many tools, so little time. Something like that. Let's see, did I get out of pattern? Yep. I just strung a crazy lace where I should have strung a citrine. Kimberly says it is much clearer with your cell phone. I thought so. When I plugged it in last week and tested it, I was like astonished. And I was like, I don't know how that's going to translate into a Facebook Live, but when I was testing it just in a, within the Zoom um, platform, I was astonished at the difference. So, yay. Happy to have made that improvement. Kim is saying that she usually, usually flings a couple beads across the, across the room while she's doing this. Oh, yes. Have have definitely done that, which is why there's all these little extras sitting around just in case something like that happens. I'm really enjoying the blues that you're doing this design in. Yeah, it's refreshing. Nearing the end.
sometimes with these little beads that have a lot of, um, you know, variation in the pattern, the color of the beads, it's hard to tell where the hole is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I stack another pair of glasses on at that point. So maybe I should turn my light up a teeny bit. She says as she's like three beads away from the end. <laughs> Never too late. I'm really getting very excited to see this one finished. You know, it's a fun process. Uh, um, I mean, the little fin the ribbon, adjustable ribbon thing that that's, I'm gonna enjoy showing that. All right, so here's all my beads. Does everything look even? Did I miss a bead? Did I forget something? It looks pretty good. You know, Julie, um, in the original, which now what did I do with it? I've discovered, of course, during photography that I had um, missed a, I had repeated a color or something. That's funny. So this one's actually got a, a fooey up, as my partner calls it, when it's got a mistake. Or aren't there um, cultures that, that do um, yes. crafts where they do it on purpose? Yes, um, and it's called a spirit bead when it's in a seed bead pattern. It's, I think it's called a spirit bead. We had this discussion in a um, in another demonstration a few months ago, I think. That's where I learned it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wait a minute, what am I doing here? Okay, so I've got my pattern done and I, have, I strung my crimp bead after the last bead and then I'm threading my wire through um, one of our four by three millimeter oval jump rings, which I've already closed. And the reason I want it closed is because I'm going to um, just thread the, th thread the wire through and keep that there. It's gonna be what I use to attach to the ring um, but I need it closed so my wire stays secure in there while I'm working. I'll open it, of course, again to attach it to the ring. That's a nifty trick. So, got my crimp bead in place. I'm just going to crimp this. And I think Julie has, Julie, did I send you a link for the blog where we have our little how-to stuff? We have a yes, crimping. Yeah, let, let me go. I was fat. I, I, I'll break away from this to <laughs> find that. I'm going to trim off some of this extra. I've got that crimped in place and I just want to trim some of this off. I might end up trimming, trimming more as well, but for now. I want to thread this back through some of the beads, but it depends on how big the bead holes are, if I'm going to be successful at that. Yay, and it looks like I might be able to pull that off, at least through the citrine. Yay, and through the crazy lace agate too. Gretchen says that Na Native American tribes make a mistake in all of their craft rugs, baskets, and beadwork. Yeah, and it's because we are humans and we're not perfect, is the philosophy behind it, I believe. Hmm. So don't try to be perfect. I know some people might argue with that whole thing, but here we go. <laughs> I've got got that threaded through a few through be, through a few beads, and I've trimmed off my extra, and then I can go back to the other side and take off my little bead stopper, find my other jump ring. and repeat that whole thing on this side. So Tracy, that doesn't make you nervous having the wire on a jump ring that opens? Well, um, you know, a lot of people prefer to use wire guardians for that kind of application, mm -hmm. but our jump rings are nice and sturdy. They, you know, if you close it securely it, and it's nice and snug, it shouldn't come open. It's so funny. I was having a conversation with a customer yesterday that about our jump rings are like our like rock stars. Mm -hmm. I mean, people come up to us all the time just raving that they are the best. Well, we agree, but you know, we're biased. 
Well, no, I, I mean, I don't even feel like I'm biased. I've been using them for 30 years. And that oval that you're using right there is like our number one jump ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I pull this, um, when I get ready to crimp that other end, I want it to be snug, but want not too tight because I want room for the beads to be able to drape nicely. So I don't want to pull everything too tight. Just take up the slack. Mm -hmm. And then I already strung on my little jump ring there. You can go ahead and crimp that down. So the reason you didn't put the um, uh, the beading wire straight through the ring is you want, didn't want that wire to show up so much. Is that correct? Yeah, and that would actually be totally be an option as you could absolutely, I could just have attached the beading wire to the ring. That's what Gretchen was saying she preferred to do. Yeah. But I, I um, agree our jump rings can, are up for the task. Yeah, it kind of depends on the designer, either one, either way will work. But now I am going to attach that jump ring to this little ring. And this is where I'll take some extra care, Julie, and make sure that that is nice and tight. Mm -hmm. And I, you notice I tipped it back and forth a couple times to work hard in it. Yeah. And to just work the ends close together. Yep. You know, I honestly can say I've never had a tear cast jump ring fail ever. So I am kind of a- You're, you're confident. Yeah, I'm pretty confident in them. What I was just discovering when I looked up at the um, at the uh, at the computer is that I am not used to where the the focus is on this camera yet. So I was working way over here, but I caught that, and I'll try to pay attention to it going forward. All right, so now I have my two little rings attached. I, that's all crimped and secured. And now I'm going to show you guys how to um, attach my wire. I mean, my uh, silk ribbon. Do you know why I didn't even know this was adjustable when I saw it in the pictures and all the marketing material? Oh, you didn't hear me blabber on about how proud I was of that. I was well, so excited. Only, only when you did your first, um, I don't know, I watched a video where you showed that it was, a. oh, you were wearing it and you showed it was adjustable. And I was like, well, that's really cool. I had no idea. Okay, so to, um, to start my little adjustable silk ribbon part of the necklace, I just threaded the barrel bead onto the end of the ribbon at one side, and then I'm gonna thread that through the ring and thread the end back up through that barrel bead. And then I'll just work that. I want a nice little length to work with a little bit, so I'm pulling that through. Yeah, those barrel and then, beads and those rings are amazing. What's that? The barrel beads and the rings are just um, so fun to work with. Yeah. So you can see then how the connection looks. And when we're done, you'll be able to slide this bead, um, you know, close to the ring or further away, depending on what you want. So um, the sliding knot part is just an overhand knot. So I'm wrapping. I've got my long end of the ribbon. I'm taking the short end and just wrapping it around once. And then threading it back through that loop that I created. And then tighten up that little knot. And I wanna keep, I'm sliding the knot up close to the end of the ribbon because I don't want to end up with a long tail of ribbon. I just want a short end. And I want it to be kind of tight so it stays in place, but I still want to be able to pull this through. So I don't want it terribly tight because I need to be able to, and for it to be adjustable, this needs to be able to slide through. 
So that's one side. So on that other side, it had been trimmed off and I had put a little bit of fabric glue at the end to like twist that end back together. So it was nice and a little bit stiff. I was able to manipulate it through the bead very easily. That is not the case with this side. It's the original end, so it's very soft. So I'm gonna, um, gonna use some tweezers to help me. Another great tool. Yep. And then through the ring. And back through that barrel bead. And finish it with that little sliding knot. So then I kind of, oops, bumped my camera, kind of demonstrated it already for you guys, but so it just to adjust it is very easy. If I want it to be worn short, I'm going to slide those knots back towards the back of the necklace. And when I am sliding the knots and adjusting it, <clears throat> it's easier if I keep that barrel bead up there by the knot. And then I can slide the barrel bead back into position where I want it. So let's see. I see why you were so proud. See, see how smart I am. <laughs> 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 so, um, so that's how you adjust it. So the knots would be way back here at the back if you want it to be a shorter necklace. And then if I want it to hang really long, I'm just going to bring those knots all the way back down <clears throat> closer to the sides of the necklace. So then it'll be shorter or longer rather. So it's super fun. It's really yep. pretty. Very adjustable. Now we still have to finish the um, the focal. So I have, I'm going to need another jump ring. And I have that pretty piece of blue appetite. That I'm going to string onto a head pin. And I'm going to add a spacer and a piece and a, one of those little citrine beads just to embellish it a little bit. And then I'm going to make a simple loop. And if anybody was watching, I want this to be a fairly large simple loop because the thickness of the pendant here, that's kind of substantial. So I want my loop to be big enough for the dangle to have room to swing, you know, for some movement. Hey, Tracy, um, somebody wants to know what length of ribbon you started with. Those silk ribbons, um, typically you buy them and they're a 32 to 36 inch length. There is some variation, but mm -hmm. they're just, a, just around a yard. That was Kim wanted to know that. Yeah. So there's my little simple loop. It's kind of a roomy one. And then I can add my that onto the bottom of the pendant. Um, so to search for these, um, the ribbon, you would want to use the term hand dyed silk ribbon and maybe throw for jewelry making in there as well. Um, and you should be able to find many sources for this. Um, so I got my little 
embellishment hanging off the bottom and I'm going to use that jump ring to attach the pendant to the bail. I'm going to put a link to our bales. That's a great idea. Um, the bale I'm using is our royal bale. Um, it's a great little kind of all-purpose bale, and it comes in, I think, all of our available finishes, so it's a good one. Um, and it's got just a little bit of embellishment, so it's nice without trying to steal the, steal the thunder, you know? Yeah. I'm going to move my beading tray out of the way. So you guys can see this. So that's it. Um, it's pretty simple. It really didn't take very long. It's um, and you know the adjustability just makes it so versatile. That's that's nice. And so of course I was super curious how this technique would work with the leather cord. So I made, made a version yesterday with two millimeter leather cord instead of the silk ribbon. And with the, with the silk ribbon one, I used the six by two millimeter barrel beads. I could have used the four by twos, but I was thought that that might be a little bit tight. Um, so I used the six by twos. But with the two millimeter cord, I went to some of our four by two barrel beads. And these ones are our Jardine from the Dulce Vita. Um, <clears throat> and again, I used the uh, little Flora rings and it worked really well. And with this one, this is a little bit of a loose fit. So what I could, I could crimp that down just a teeny bit to make it, I don't want to crimp it so hard that it's like, stuck in place, but I do maybe want it to hold its place a little bit. So I'm going to use some parallel pliers here and just crimp it a teeny bit to make it, yeah, that makes it so it will stay a little better. It gives it some grip on the cord. And also with this one, rather than just doing that simple overhand sliding knot, I did a little sliding barrel knot and I thought I would demo that if you guys want to see it. I had a little piece of leather cord cut and ready. Hey, Tracy, could you show like to the camera how those parallel pliers move for people that don't know about them? These are amazing. They work so nicely for crimping um, our barrel beads and those kinds of things. And I don't think I've used them quite as much on our like palace crimp end and the, the taco style of crimp ends, but for barrel beads, they are just awesome. So in like a traditional chain nose plier, the, the grip comes down um, angled. It's, you know, it's hinged at the back. And so it's coming down at an angle, but the parallel pliers are made so that these surfaces are parallel to each other, obviously. And um, so the grip, the compression is parallel. So they work really well. And yeah, again, don't I, don't want to crimp, I don't want to crimp that too tight because I want it to move still. They don't try to squirt the bead out. And that's a big thing because <laughs> when, you're, when you're trying to crimp with these guys or with a pair of nylon jaw pliers, you have to be careful that the bead doesn't go shooting out from the front. So it, it, these are really nice for this purpose. Um, so barrel sliding knot, um, just because everybody loves these and um, it does the slider, the barrel sliding knot looks better with the leather than the um, just a simple overhand would have. So. My process for sliding knots is wherever I am, maybe I should just do it on the necklace itself so you guys can see, you know, how to do it on an actual design. So I've got my end and what I would do then is line up those two cords 
and fold the loose end over. And I want to give myself plenty to work with. So I've got at least four inches here. And I'm going to fold that. So I've got like the, the necklace cord and then I have my working cord and I've got it folded. And I'm going to hold on to that and wrap the end around the two strands. And I think with this one, I just did two wraps. You could do three, you could do more depending on how long you want this to be. But for this one, I just did two rounds. And so then I take that end and I thread it back through my little loops and back through that original loop that was formed by folding the leather. And then I'm gonna use my finger to keep this nudged up towards the end of the cord there. And I'm just gonna start pulling those ends apart to tighten, to tighten that. And I especially want to make sure I keep that right close to the end on this design because my lengths are already finished. So I don't really have the core, um, I don't have extra to trim off. So I don't want to end up with a big long tail here and have to trim that off. This is sort of a finished design that would be sabotaging it a little bit, I think so. And so then again, I want this to be pulled so it's snug, but I don't want it so tight that I can't move the knot. So that's just about good. And again, both of the knots to the back are gonna create a shorter necklace. And both of the knots closer to the um, rings are gonna be a longer necklace. I almost crimped this one a little bit too tight, Julie. Uh oh. It's still fine, but it does have a Can you open them up a bit after you crimp them? I could. I could try sticking a pair of chain nose pliers in there and just and just opening it up a little bit, but there, this was okay. So there, now I've got me a longer necklace. It's a really different look. Yeah. And we've got the like Sundance it. flavor going on. For sure. For sure. So I'm going to be wearing this one because I like this one. I do too. <laughs> so I, really I think like that's, that's it for the demo. I don't think I have anything else fancy to show you guys. And as happens every time when I go to change my camera, I always accidentally stop the camera feed. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's our jewelry making demo for the day. Um, I will be loading up the downloadable PDF for this necklace and um, I'll, I'll make a post. It should be available within the next hour or so. You guys can download the project and try it yourself. And I would be super interested to see what other kind of ribbon or um, stringing materials that people would might use, might be inspired to use for this design. So, um, so thanks you guys. Thank you for popping into um, uh, watch our demo and um, there are a couple other things coming up that we've got happening next Tuesday's demo at 10 a.m. Um, is going to be um, it, you know it's National Craft Month and so um, we're working with the Mojo2 Facebook group with the companies that are involved in that and we're kind of trying to do more crafty demos so next week I have um, Michelle with Leather Cord USA is going to be um, guesting and we're going to demo a couple of different, I'm gonna switch my camera back real quick. So I'm gonna demo, the idea was something more crafty and less jewelry. So the best I could come up with really <laughs> is um, a purse charm. So the, the phrase is Julie thinking outside of the jewelry box. Yeah, so, I love it. <laughs> so I've got this pretty little purse charm that I'm gonna demo next Tuesday. And Michelle, I think has got a dream catcher kind of wall hanging design using some of her leather products that she's gonna demo. So I'm hoping that we'll be, be able to pull that off um, in, our, in our hour time slot, a demo from her and a demo from me. We'll see how it goes. Is and that then, the leather uh, word? tassel or did you make that tassel no i made the tassel okay and what i think i'll do probably julie is um i'm going to make a couple other tassels using different types of um 
the leather cord that's available because there's you know there's this one is just kind of the standard suede lace i think and but there's like that softer deer tan lace and there's of course the round cord so i'll probably do a few different tassels just to show how they look different and i'm using our six millimeter um temple cord end for that so well, that'll be fine. all no tassels aren't going anywhere anytime soon boy they were just that was an enduring it seems like it's slightly less of a hot trend right now but i could be wrong but man for a while there it was just tassels never died they were just but the, you're right they're still there's still something that people like a lot yep. and then um let's see on sunday march 22nd that weekend is the uh great beat extravaganza spring fling so i have a a time slot scheduled for Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. We won't be able to say Pacific Standard Time because then it'll be daylight savings time. So I'm just going to say Pacific time. Um, that'll be 1 p.m. And so watch for both those, those things. There'll be social media posts. And so, you know, we'll try not to let you miss it. And I think that's it, Julie. Yay. Good Yay. job. So thanks, you guys. And um, happy Tuesday. And we'll see you next week, hopefully. All right. Bye. See you later.